three ten thousands. Like the specifications called for. I don't understand, Stefan. Then the fault is not mine. It is in the steel itself. Lucas? Kasner? What are you doing here? Good evening, Mr. Foster. What are you men up to? Nothing, Mr. Foster. We, we were just wondering how come Steve's job turned out so bad. He did a lousy job. That's how come. But, Mr. Foster, it looks perfect to me. Here, check it for yourself. I don't have to. Go on now, beat it. Listen, Mr. Foster. Shut up. But, Mr. Foster. And you too. All right, Kasnar. Out and stay out. You're through here. No, you must listen to Lucas, me. Get this man out of here. You're four minutes late, Sam. Good reason to be. The man I put on that tubing order, Kasner, was out in the shop just now. Yes? He was trying to find out what he had done wrong. To make it crack up when they installed it. I should have sent him in here to talk to you fellas. You bought the steel he worked on. From you, Dorn. Oh, you're in on it too. That's why I call this meeting. What about Kasner? I fired him. Smart. Things have been going so good lately. Not for me. Really, Sam. You're in for 30%. You've netted 18 or 20,000 so far. 16,000. That ain't peanuts, you know, for a production manager. An outfit this size? I want 50%. Or I'm going to tell Mr. Jensen that his purchasing agent and his jobber have been cheating him blind. And how are you going to stay in the clear? Me? I've just been giving you boys enough rope. Would Jensen buy that? I think he might. Okay, Sam, you've got it. Fifty percent. It would have been sixty percent next time. studio, I thought I was all done with the subject of my television debate. The law, does it help justice or hinder it? Thirty seconds later, though, the subject was reopened by a machinist named Anton Lucas. Mr. Maris, my name is Anton Lucas. I, I had to see you. The reason I had to find you, it's an emergency. Steve won't listen to me. Steve? I Stefan Kasner. Kasner, yes, I've seen that name. It has been in the newspapers for the last two days, but he didn't do it, Mr. Maris. He did not kill Sam Foster, no matter what they say. According to the papers, he ran away, Mr. Lucas. Why? He was afraid of the police. You see, he's only been in this country for a couple of months. He's still hiding out? Yes, sir. But if you talk to him, if you promise to help him... Mr. Lucas, even if the man were innocent, I couldn't talk to him. But he is innocent. You've got to help him. I'm sorry. You, you don't understand. If I go to Steve and tell him that you turned him down, I don't know what he would do. He's getting desperate. I mean it, Mr. Maris. All right, bring him to my office. I'll talk to him. If the story adds up, I'll see that he's adequately represented by one of my assistants. You, you wouldn't be able to do it yourself? I'm going to be in court most of this week and next on a tax matter. But I will keep an eye on the Kasner case. All right. You understand, of course, that after I've talked to him, I'll have to send for the police and that he'll have to surrender to them. That will be all right. As long as Steve knows that you are looking out for him, you will be, huh? I can tell him that? Thank you, Mr. Maris.
is it? Uncle. You couldn't find Mr. Morris. I found him, Stefan. Well, where is he then? He will not help me. Of course he will help us. He wants you to come to his office right away. He wants you to tell him the whole story. At his office? Well, why not here? Uh, Anton, this could be a trap. No. No, he is not that kind of a man. He won't even send for the police until after he has talked to you. He promised me. You believe this? Yes. Of course I do. Hey, I brought you food. Eat and we will go, huh? Stefan. Stefan, this is not like the old country. Here, a man like Mr. Maris, he... He shakes your hand and that is it. You can take it to the bank. Open up, police! He had me followed. Grab it, Kedna. <laughs> Forget him for now. This is the one we want. And further, in the case of McCrary versus Hartford, previously cited, it was held that... Just a minute, Miss Benton. It was held that intent to defraud... It's me, Mr. Maris. Anton Lucas. Where's Kasner? You shouldn't have lied to me, Mr. Maris. What do you mean? All that I heard about you, what a great man you were. You shook my hand, then you sent for the police. The police have arrested him? Just as you told them to. Why don't you pick up the phone and have them come and get me too? Well, don't blame me if the police were clever enough to shatter you. I had nothing to do with it. I'm only trying to find out where they've taken him. Why? I said I'd talk to him. Benton, get me Lieutenant Weston, please. We made a mistake or two before, maybe, and maybe we will again, only this time we didn't. You think Kastner's guilty, huh? I arrest people, I don't judge them. But we get enough on this boy to burn them. The night watchman statement? That's uh, what Kasner's own buddy said, Lucas. The night watchman saw Kasner standing over the body. When he saw the night watchman, he took off like a thief. Lieutenant, why would Kasner want to kill Sam Foster? Didn't Lucas tell you? Kasner had a beef with Foster at the plant that night, and Foster fired him. Go on. It's all there in the folder. Lucas took Kasner out for a walk after the blow-up to cool him off. In a little bit, Kasner said he wanted to go back and talk to Foster. Alone. Kasner said, quote... I'm sure I can prove I'm right, and then he'll give my job back to me, unquote. Yeah. That sound to you like a man with murder on his mind? So he changed his mind. I'd like to hear what he has to say about it. Is that all right with you, Lieutenant? You representing him, Counsel? My office, maybe. I won't know until I've talked to him. <laughs> I doubt that he'll talk to you. He thinks you've turned him in. The police knew he was your friend, Kasner, so they assigned a man to follow him. Lucas led them to you. I had nothing to do with it. That's the truth, Kasner. Why are you here, then? If you're innocent, to help you. With him here? Did you kill Sam Foster? When I walked into the office, he was already dead. You had an argument with him earlier in the evening? I did, but... Matter of fact... He fired you practically through you out of the place. Yes. His mind was already made up against me. And that made you angry, didn't it? Yes. Then I realized where I was. That there was another way. Many other ways. Tell us what you mean. In my country, if a workman is treated unjustly, what can he do? He cannot even go to his foreman. Were he to dare even speak of it to his supervisor, to a man like Mr. Foster, he would be sent to prison, worse to the mines. Very nice speech. I did not lift my hand against him. 
Surely you believe me, Mr. Morris. You will help me. You haven't given me very much to help you with. It is the same here, then. No. No? There, a man is believed guilty when he's brought to trial. He must prove his innocence. I thought that here, he was innocent before the law until the state proved his guilt. Kasner, did you ever kill a man? Yes. God forgive me. In the war, for freedom. I could not take a life again. Not even for such a cause. I'll be back. I've got to check something. Come on, let's go. I've thought and thought about it, Maris. No, Sam didn't have any enemies. None would want to kill him anyway. Except Kasner. Now, they got the right man, all right. You seem pretty certain of that, Mr. Hammond. Why? That's all his kind knows. Man does something that riles you, you smash his head in. His kind? You know what I mean. The way they're always killing each other off over there on the other side. I was wondering, did Foster have any trouble with him before that night? Plenty. Big tubing job Kasner worked on turned out real bad. Company we made it for raised the roof. Foster tried to straighten him out, but that character just wouldn't admit it was his fault. I suppose Foster had to fire him, but he'd be alive today if he hadn't. Well, thank you, Mr. Hennon. Glad to help you get the picture. You did. Lieutenant, I'd like everything you've got on the Foster killing so far. I'm going to represent Kasner personally. Oh, you finally talked him into it. No, no, he didn't. A man named Hinman did. The longer I studied the facts on the murder of Sam Foster, the more certain I was that my client, Steve Kasner, was innocent. But not for any reason I could prove. Not yet. United States Employment Service tested Kasner three months ago and rated him an expert machinist. A number one. So? So it's just not possible he was fired for spoiling that order. He couldn't do that bad a job if he tried. You think Foster fired him for some other reason? Covering up something or somebody. And that somebody knocked him off anyway. Oh, that's reaching pretty far. Once I find out what really went wrong with that order, you may not have to reach far at all, Lieutenant. What went wrong? Kasner is a careless workman. This is precision work, Mr. Maris. They must be very accurate. How do you ever manage to get a job here, Mr. Jensen? Your shop had such a good reputation. Mistake. It happens. I tested him out like everybody we put on, and he fooled me. He checked out great. I'm still not completely clear on what went wrong. No. George, did you bring one of those tubing rejects with you? Yes, sir. Get it, will you? Mm-hmm. George there is one of the best purchasing agents in town. I imagine he knows steel pretty well, then. That's production's job. Men like Sam Foster rest his soul. Sam knew steel. Hinman knows where to get it. That's what I pay him for. This is what went wrong, Maris. Vanadium steel's the toughest you can buy. It's supposed to take real punishment without cracking. Only it cracked. Every length of tubing they installed had only 1,200 pounds pressure. It was designed to carry that much, I suppose. The order called for tubing that would carry 1,500 pounds pressure. 
What we gave them should have stood up under 16 or better. Instead, it went to pieces at 12. Because Kasner machined it wrong. But it wasn't the fault of the steel. I didn't say it was, Mr. Hanman. That tubing came from inter-allied vanadium of Pittsburgh. Here's the invoice. Shipped by Frank Dorn Company, this city, Jobbers. Best in town. Been giving us great service for years. Same for inter-allied? Oh, uh, no. We just started doing business with them. Dorn recommended them, didn't he? That's right, Mr. Jensen. They're a little high, but you said never mind about that. Right. This is quality operation all the way down the line, Mr. Maris. Except for a one in a million goof-off like Kasner pulled. No one else could have ruined that job, Mr. Maris. Well, if you ever do find out differently, I would like to know. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen, for your help. Anytime. Well, how do you like that? To make Kasner look good, he's got to make us look bad. Maybe we do look bad. You're kidding, Mr. Jensen. Maybe there was something wrong with the design. Maybe even the steel. I want you to check it out, George, all the way. Yes, sir. What took you so long? I came as soon as I could. What's eating you? I'll tell you what. You told me that tubing had to be able to carry 800 pounds. The stuff I shipped could. More even. But not 1,200 for Pete's sake. Look, you just stick with the story, understand? All you did was order the steel for me from inter-allied vanadium. All you did was forward it. All I did was receive it. Suppose they backtrack to Pittsburgh. What'll they find? You've taken care of that already? I took care of it, Dorn. You got nothing to worry about, understand? You just stick with the story. It was not vanadium steel. You're sure of that? Why? It machined so easily. I worked with vanadium steel once in Europe. It was diamond hard. You told that to Foster? I told him, but he said I didn't know what I was talking about. But when the news came that the tubing had cracked and split, then I knew. And Foster knew that you knew. He had to fire you. To conceal his mistake? No mistake. A plan. A plan to cheat the company. And I'm sure that whoever set it up with Foster ended up by killing him. And it wasn't you. You're sure they don't answer? Inter-Allied Vanadium must have a switchboard. Would you check it for me? Inter-Allied Vanadium of Pittsburgh. Great big company and nobody answers the phone. Yes? Let's see. Well, thanks. The number's disconnected. Could be a coincidence. Could be. But I don't think so. This is what I thought the Pittsburgh mills of Inter-Allied Vanadium Company might look like. With offices and a skyscraper like this. Instead, the phone book listed this as Inter-Allied's sole address. Mister, he don't live here anymore. He? Mr. Hart. Gus Hart, I think. Yeah, Gustav Hart. Called in yesterday. Said he was closing up shop, effective immediately. Wanted me to rebate some of the rent money. <laughs> My fault? He paid up three months in advance? Of course not. Say, do you happen to remember what this Mr. Hart looks like? Like anybody else. Why? Well, Gus Hart doesn't dress like anybody else. At least he didn't used to. You know, sports jacket, fancy vest, everything that goes with it. <laughs> That's him, all right. Buddy of yours, huh? Life safe. The way I see it, Hinman, you've got just one chance with Jensen. 
clearing yourself before he finds out. It's hard to believe about Frank Dorn. It's the truth, though. He pulled a fast one. Charged it for the high grade, delivered the medium grade, and pocketed the difference. I'll be. Does he know what you found out? No. We're leaving him alone for a while. We? The police. Until they complete their case against him for murder. Murder? They think he killed Sam Foster. Probably because Foster caught on to the swindle. Well, how did they... I mean... Did they know he was there that night? Not fairly sure of it. And when they start questioning him... You know Frank Dorn pretty well. You think he'll hold out for long? When do you think they'll... Uh, pick him up? Oh, I don't know. By tomorrow, probably. Well, I've got to be going. I want to catch Jensen before he cuts off for the day. Oh, I hope you do. I'd better, huh? I want to save my neck. <laughs> Thanks again, Maris. Now, dog. tried to kill me. The way he killed Foster? Keep your mouth shut. They can't prove a thing about Foster. That's right, Hinman. Not without a witness. We won't be able to hold you on that charge. You will now. You've got a witness. Me.
All right, you understand the rules? You check their car into the Wardman you drive when you get to Harleyville. Yeah, but they give me a car to drive back. Where do I send this thing? Right here. What's the matter with you, kid? You all right? Yeah, I'm kind of nervous. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting married tonight. Oh. Well, see you around. <laughs> didn't tell him. I tried to, Tommy. Honestly, but he got so furious. He said if I ever married you, I could never come home again. The reform school bit again. Or right, let's tell him. No, please. I know what I'm doing. I'm a little scared, but I love you, Tommy, and that's all that matters now. Tommy, please. I took an extra ten minutes from lunch today so I could stop by and put a deposit on the apartment. But uh, Here are the keys. Oh, but Alice, that place is so crummy, especially the kitchen. I told you, it doesn't matter. It'll be fun fixing it up. I do don't even know if I can cook. <laughs> oh, honey, inside of a year I'll finish that night school course and... Well, what I mean is the apartment's not for keeps. I finish the course and I'll get you an apartment. An apartment. What am I talking? I'll get you a house. A house. Tom! Where do you live, Tom? Uh, Eighty-one sixty Manix Drive. What kind of work do you do? I'm an aircraft worker. I go to school. This car registered to you? No, no, I, I rented this. Kids are pretty lucky. Inch one way or the other, you might have been dead, you know that. Turn around. Hey. Turn around and spread. What are you doing? Turn around. He didn't do anything. He just tried to avoid hitting that old man. We're going away to get married, that's all. Can you wait 20 years, lady? It's the terminus date for transporting dope. on an antitrust case when Ralph Carlson came to see me. Several years before, I'd helped him get a job as a parole officer. Now he'd come back to ask another favor, but not one for himself. Uh, all right, that does it. Now, Ralph. Will you take the case, Mr. Morris? I'm sorry, Ralph. Will you at least see the boy? From what you've told me, the evidence all points to his guilt. But if you feel so strongly about his innocence, there are other legal channels. I've tried them all. That's why I'm here this morning, Mr. Morris. Tom Nelson went to reform school at 15. He came out a tough, hard little punk. And naturally, I had to draw him out of the file. That's because I was new on the job. I took it all out on the boy. I was going to teach him a few things. But he taught me, Mr. Morris. People aren't headlines or file case numbers. Or items in corporation reports? These items in corporation reports represent six months of hard legal work. I'm sorry. I'm the one that ought to be doing a favor for you, not the other way around. But if I didn't know that this boy couldn't have done it, do you think I'd have come to you? Ralph, you're, you're very persuasive. All I ask is that you talk to him. <laughs> Turn it 
out the four rocks of perdition will strike and spew into the multitudes. And you, you saw where will you be? Where will you be when the Holocaust works its way into your life? And you, you're a new man here, but the time will come when he will find that judgment will pay. Do you have any idea how much time and effort has gone into making my business what it is today? One of the largest car rental chains in the country? No, of course you don't. Oh, you would never have dragged my manager, Mr. Turner, in here and smeared the name of my company all over your police records. Turner has been released. The questioning was purely routine. Routine? Because how would I... This little fiasco is going to cost me an awful lot of money. To say nothing of the headaches I can expect from the Interstate Commerce Commission. Well, tell me, Mr. Wardman, exactly what is it you expect? Protection, Lieutenant. Protection. It's up to you to keep these hopped up little toughs from using my cars. And if anything else like this happens, I assure you, I will turn the matter over to my legal staff. Good day, Lieutenant. What was that all about? <laughs> well, uh, say, before you say anything. It better not have anything to do with the Nelson case. I'm afraid this has to do with the Nelson case, Lieutenant. Oh, no. I'm up to here on that. Look, I've checked the boy's record. He's kept his nose clean since he left the reformatory. Well, tell me, Counselor, exactly how much checking did you do? Do you know the rap that Nelson went to reform school on was an accessory to murder? He was gunned the getaway car while his junkie brother shot a druggist to death for a handful of pennies? Now, Lieutenant. Dope is one of the filthiest, rottenest things I have to deal with in my job. If I had my way, I'd send him and every peddler and pusher up for life. Since you've decided the boy's guilty without a trial, why don't we just judge him by the crime that he's accused of, don't, huh? Don't stick your hands into a mess like this, Herb. Just stay with your nice, clean corporation law. Huh? I'd like a pass to see the boy. You representing him? Possibly. Do you know how much uncut heroin he was carrying? Enough to infect a thousand new users. High school kids, teachers, even lawyers. I would like a pass to see him, Lieutenant. All right. But you can make a deal with him for me. The only deal. Either he spills on the ones up top in the racket. Names, dates, drop routes, and everything. Or I'll personally see the books thrown at him. Charlie... The tenant said he wanted names, dates, and places. Look, if you're not going to believe me, why don't you just let me alone? Lieutenant Weston doesn't play games. He said that's the deal, and that's it. What do you want me to do, look grateful? You mean you think you're tough? Oh, I'm not tough. I just didn't do what they said I did. Look, you're not going to believe me. They're not going to believe me, so why fight it? I didn't send for you in the first place, so blow! All right, don't Mr. Maris. Well, what about Alice? Are they holding Alice? Is she a user? Is that why you're hauling the stuff? No. You think I touch dope? No. Oh, just grab a quick dollar out of the ones that are hooked? Like your brother? Well, now you shut up. You shut up! You got it all figured out, don't you? Well, you don't! You don't... You don't know. I was 14 years old before I knew what was wrong with Ed. He was just like anybody else. He wasn't bad. Until he started having to have the stuff. Then I'd get sick watching him. He hated it, too, because I helped him go cold turkey once. Two weeks of crying and screaming and begging just like a little kid. But I kept that door closed. I thought it was clean. Then he shot the druggist. Me sitting in the car. <laughs> I saw Ed shot down. I watched him die. But it wasn't the cops killed him. Junk. You think I pushed over? Well, let me tell you something. 
before I put... <coughs> <coughs> If Tom Nelson was innocent, then somebody had set up that dope drop. Perhaps someone at the U-Drive outlet where Tom had rented his car. I decided to take a closer look at this operation and question the manager, Chet Turner. How many cars go out of here every day? Well, that depends. Weekends, we got more. Don't you have a record of them? Sure, we got a record. Look, I'm kind of busy today, mister, huh? Have you check every car that goes out of here thoroughly before you lease it? I'm not answering anything more. You got no right here unless you got a warrant or something. You got a warrant? What are you so afraid of? Nothing. Just a minute. From the time Nelson left here to the time he hit the lamppost, he didn't get out of the car. That means the dope was taped to the bumper when it left here. You're crazy, mister. Why are you so intent on pressing this case against Nelson? better get out of here before you make a lot of trouble for yourself. What kind of trouble? A frame-up like the one that Nelson's in? Beat it. I'll be back. I want to see what else besides gas fumes smells around here. Yes? Oh, Turner. I understand. Well, look, if you'll stop jabbering and let me talk, it's all going to be taken care of. All right, and Turner, we'll hold off on the shipment for this week. Yes. They're expecting that shipment. I've stuck my neck out far enough. There'll be no more cars going out with orders until I say so. Well, it's a business, Mr. Wardman. Business should be run on schedule. The organization... The organization is not my worry right now. It's mine. That's why I was sent here. Uh, Martin. There's a lawyer poking into the Nelson case. I think it should be nailed shut. I know how to do it. Can I help? Yes, you can. I'm a step ahead of you, Counselor. Ran an FBI check on Turner. What'd you turn up? Extortion. Fifteen years ago, he did six months. Extortion? That changes everything. That means... That oh, now, wait a minute, Herb. The fact that a man's got a 15-year-old conviction on his record doesn't really prove anything. But you ought to know that better than anybody else. Look, if Turner's a convicted extortionist, that could... Excuse me, Herb. There's a moment. great possibility. Excuse me, please. Hello? Yes, yeah, speaking. Thank you. Narcotic squad, Herb. Got a tip from an informer that just about washes your client's case down the drain. You want to come along? out to the market for a few minutes. Did you check that chandelier? You're making a case on the basis of an informer? Counselor, I don't make the ground rules. The killers do that. Lieutenant! Here it is. Heroin. Mr. Barris, I swear I don't know how it got there. Honestly, I didn't lie to you. Please. I, I, I give you my solid word of honor. I don't know how it got there. Last Tuesday's paper, the day before we picked up Nelson. Counselor, it looks like this just about wraps up the case on your plan. How can I tell you how it got there when I don't even know? Look, Mr. Maris, I was in that apartment maybe ten minutes, long enough to leave some clothes after I rented it. But Alice was there. Well, now, sure she was there. That's where we're going to live after we was married. 
Mr. Maris stop trying to drag Alice into this, you hear me? She could have set up the whole thing. Tipped somebody off about the car you were going to rent, planted the dope in the Mr. apartment. Mr. Maris, I don't want you for my lawyer anymore. I, I just don't want anything to do with you. How are you so certain that Alice didn't frame you? Because I know she wouldn't. Because that's how I, I know she wouldn't. Oh, no. That's not good enough. Well, that's good enough for me. Look, Alice is the only person in the whole world who ever spent two cents worth of feeling on me. The only one. You've seen her, Mr. Maris. You know what she's like. And it's got to be you drive up it. It's got to be Turner. You know, for a lawyer of your reputation, you seem remarkably shy of evidence. Well, if I had the facts, I wouldn't have come to you. But I do have logic. Now, you have a national chain of car rentals, a perfect setup for transporting narcotics. Oh, come now. Now, someone rents a car from you. Tom Nelson, me, anyone. It's a simple matter for a package of dope to be hidden in the car and then taken off at the end of the trip in another city. This racket is work from inside your organization. Mr. Maris, you like this? Yes. This piece of jade is ageless and very expensive. This vase, over a thousand years old. And this. Beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Those dogs of Fu. They can be traced clear back to the first Ming dynasty. So they tell me. You know, it took an awful lot of car rentals to pay for all this. When I started out, I worked in a dinky little office in the back of a filling station. I have no intention of going back to that. Bad publicity? The public would no longer rent my cars. No, Mr. Maris, I'm afraid your client has already caused me enough trouble. I realize this may be troublesome for you, Mr. Wardman, but Tom Nelson is innocent. So you say. I not only say it, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm only asking you to give Nelson the same kind of understanding you've given a man with Turner's background. I picked my managers very carefully, Mr. Maris. But you knew he had a felony conviction on his record? No. No, I didn't. Extortion. Chicago, 15 years ago. I see. Uh, just what is it you want from him, Mr. Maris? Put a man you can trust at the outlet and audit Turner's books. Now, you may not find out anything. The man's not stupid. But I do think he'll scare. Yes, it's possible that he might be frightened into giving himself away if your accusations are correct. I'll put as much legal pressure on him as I can. I think between the two of us, we can make him crack. You may be right. All right. I'll get to work on it from my end. Good. Turner? Yes. Didn't tell us he had a police record. This could be bad at this point. It could cause trouble. Listen, if you want to talk to the owners, you talk to them. That's Wardman. It's not me, as you know. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, this is just a roust, and I'm not scared by it. If you think I am, go find yourself another boy. Oh, yeah? Well, I ain't going to budge nowhere without a lawyer says. And you can trot yourself down here any time you feel like it, and Mr. It ain't going to do you nickels worth of good. Oh, that Maris is a pain... <laughs> dead? No, that's why I called you. An accident? Well, it was supposed to look that way. That's why I had the medical examiner check him over before we pulled him out. He was hit over the head, dragged under the car, and somebody released the air in the hoist. Where did this happen? According to the medical examiner, about an hour ago. I was talking to him on the phone an hour ago. Talking to him about what? I was going to subpoena him for a deposition today. Somebody panicked which means that somebody higher up was worried that Turner was going to crack. 
Considering the state of Turner's health right now, I'd say you were right. Wardman. Turner was the only link to him. It's got to be Wardman. Maybe you're right about Wardman being the top man. But Turner's dead. How can we prove it? If he didn't do it himself, he ordered it done. I'm going to run a 24-hour check on Wardman and see what we come up with. He's smart enough to have himself covered all the way on this charge. <laughs> I'm afraid you're right. The only way to pin it on him is to catch him with the narcotics. Sure. But how? Well, he wouldn't take a chance on having it here. He's smart. He probably doesn't trust anybody. He'd have it close by where he could get his hands on it. Wardman's the kind of a guy to think that way. His car. No, too easy to search. Maybe his apartment. That's it. I'm willing to bet it's the apartment. Wait a minute, Herb. I can't get a search warrant, and you're willing to make a bet? Wardman doesn't know anything about Turner's dying yet, does he? Just a minute, Herb. Please, Lieutenant, I want you to do two things for me, unofficially, without breaking any regulations. Clamp down tight on the news of Turner's dying. Pull up in front of Wardman's apartment in exactly an hour. And if you want me, I'll be up there. Anything else? Yes, one other thing. Mr. Maris, you're making some pretty wild charges. Oh, stop it, Wardman. You played your string out. Really? Yes, that's right. Really. Your hood bungled the job when he tried to kill Turner. I wonder if you're going to be quite as smug when you're faced with a full statement from Turner. Implicating me? Completely. Well, if that's the case, then isn't it strange that it's you who were here instead of the police? I'd suggest you take a look out that window. <laughs> Go on. Take a look. Go ahead. The only reason I'm here is to see that nothing happens to you until you clear Tom Nelson. I see. And you'd like to make an arrangement of some sort? Well, I can't offer you immunity, but I can offer you advice. It'll go a good deal easier with you if you'll turn state's evidence. Implicating others who are associated in this little business. That's right. Now, Mr. Maris, you're really an excellent lawyer. But in this case, I'm afraid you're wrong. Because I'm sure Mr. Martin and my other associates would not find your advice acceptable. That's right. Get rid of the stuff. You see, Mr. Maris, I was prepared for just such an eventuality. Aside from this, you don't have one shred of evidence that will tie me into anything. What's the matter with this thing? Time for the water to be off. You can't burn it. You can't throw it away. You're stuck with it. What do you mean, stuck? Throw it out the window. Over there, police! Herb, are you all right? I'm all right. You try breaking in here, I'll kill him! Get away from that window. Get away from that window or I'll kill you. You do? And where will you run? He's right, Martin. Anything can happen between now and the trial. Don't add murder to everything else. Don't do it, Martin. I like the odds, Counselor. It's a long time before the trial. I'm out of here. Herb, you all right? Yeah, I'll be all right in an hour. Hmm. Well, you got your evidence. What are you so unhappy about? Oh, I'm thinking about tomorrow. What about it? There are 60 tenants in this building. They're all going to be phoning in complaints. Because you asked me to have their water turned off. I'll see that you get a good lawyer. 